very blessed day, everyone. Greetings to you in the name of the Father, the Creator, the Most High, Allah, Yah, yod Hit vahu Hit Elohim, God in our modern day name, and in the name of the Lord Thoth, Melchizedek, Yehovah. This is Neophyte DAG bringing you a new message. Black King George III of England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, Germany, versus Black George Washington and the Black colonial soldiers of the Army of America in the American Revolutionary War. A lot of the information that you have gotten about the American War for Independence, I am here to tell you, is very inaccurate. It's not true. A lot of it has been fabricated and we're here to set the record straight as to who were the people at that time doing these events. And it brings us back to Job 9 verse 24 because the people that were actually partaking in these events faces will be covered up by the hands of the wicked because the earth which is America is given into the hands of the wicked and the wicked shall cover it the face of the people that were doing things in America were doing things in Europe were native to America as well and it takes us into testament of Asha that these people that were doing all these things because a lot of the things they were doing were not in agreement with the ways of the Most High. They were disobedient, not following the ways recommended to them by the Most High to follow their five divine laws in a righteous way. And therefore, their inheritance of this earth, their control over the planet, their control over America was reduced to nothing. They were utterly scattered in all four corners of America. That's where Testament of Asha 7 comes in. You will be scattered because of your disobedience. But there's a time limit on that scattering where someone will release that energy that's called the Messiah who shall crush the head of the dragon at that time. And we're in that time where he will save the children of Israel, the children of Judah, the children of Jacob. They'll all be saved. But before that time, we were not heeding to the commandment, the laws, the covenant, the agreement that we had made with the Most High. And we walked in our own self-conceit ideas, thoroughly disobedient, thoroughly irreligious, not heeding to the commandment, and corrupted ourselves with all manner of food, idols that were given unto us, and some of our own creative ideas of what we think should and will get us through during the time of our fallen state. But we're here now to set the record straight because the man who is here to cross the dragon has been given his permission to go ahead and start the saving with the saviors. Moving on, Proverbs 21 verse 16, we were caught up in that because of our utter disobedience. We wandered into the ways of non-understanding, non-saving ourselves, and dead to who we are, not knowing who we are, what tribes we were from, what language we spoke, and what land you came from. But the time again is here when that man is here who shall release the timing of when things shall be reversed right in front of your eyes. Second Ezra 10 verse 30 was also active and running, but that now has ended where we laid as one dead, not understanding because your understanding was taken away. Your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding was taken away. It's being brought back right now. All that is being resurrected. All that is raising out of the grave. I shall open the graves of the saints, which are the ascended masters and the elect, and pour it forth, the spirit of truth within them, so they can come and tell you 
what these truths are. You can't wait. You can't wait for the wicked who change your images, who change the image of the people that were doing the things at that time. You can't wait for them or have any intention that they're going to come willingly and let you know the truth. You have to go find the truth through your own studying and through the Most High and the Lord raising up his people at this time to come forth and give truth to his daughters and his sons, to his people. Feed the flock what they need at this time to make them know this is your time. That time of punishment is over. Moving into academic fraud. These are the ones who change your image, who change your rulers, who change your leaders, who change your prophets. All their complexion, they change it to Caucasian. We are not here to defend whether it's a Caucasian person doing it or a person of color doing these things. We know who they are, so there's no arguing over it anymore. We know who we are. We know what role we play, and we're going to accept that role and move forward in the plan in the direction of the most die. So the academic fraud is over where you can deliberately deceive us. Not anymore, that won't work. You can take our information, our books and our records and give it back to us as if it's your book, can't work no more. Fabricating evidence? Can't work no more. We're doing our own research. The most die is raising up his people children of Israel, so they know who they are and from what stock they came from the Adamic stock, which are the ruddy complexion people, copper color skin people. You can't misrepresent our information anymore because we know based on our own historical research who we are, what we were doing, and where we were doing it. Can't tamper with evidence no more. That's done. The evidence is being come forward by the Holy Spirit. So you can control the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit is putting forth that information in front of us. You can't control that valve of information. That valve has been turned on and it's going to run until the children of Israel are filled with information. Suppressing our data won't work no more. Suppressing the data won't work no more because the data was stored in the upper fourth dimension and you don't have access to upper fourth, only to lower fourth. The data is written in the language of light, which you can't change. You can't change the language of light. You don't have the ability to change that. All the records that are in physical form has been put in places that you don't know of. You can't go to those holy cities and change any information. So all you have done will work at a time limit. It has an expiration date. Now it's done. No more theft of ideas. No more theft of identity. And the people don't know that it's them you're talking about when you're telling them it's someone else that was doing it, which is of a different complexion. Not anymore. Mental side stage is done. Brainwashing is done. You cannot undermine any longer the conscious mind. The most I created his people with a sound mind. And he turned back on that sound mind. He turned back on the spiritual energy which feeds that sound mind. Connect it back to the Holy Spirit and give all the information that they need in order to resurrect themselves, raise themselves up from the grave. Let's move into King George III of the Hanover line from Germany. George Augustus, as he's called, King of England, Ireland, Wales, and Scotland, 1760 to 1820. He's King of Hanover, Germany. He's Elector of Hanover, Germany for the same time period, 1760 to 1820. King George III, he was born in England at the Hanover Line. The Hanover Line mixed with the Stuart Line. That's the George Line. He lived in England. He's the great, great, great grandson of Black King James the I and the VI. His father was Black Prince Frederick of the Wales, a son of King George II. We have already covered King George I, 
King George II, now we're on King George III, and they were all black men, people of color. Make no mistake, his wife, Sophia Charlotte of Mecklenburg, Strelitz, she was black as well. A black woman, he, George III, fought the American Revolution War with black George Washington. They were both men of color. No, not the picture that you're seeing on your screen whenever you type these names in. That's where the wicked has covered the face, hoping that you keep looking at the visual face and not checking the words that are written in books and making the cross reference, knowing that there's a mismatch between what your eyes are telling you and what your sound mind is deciphering out of the books and records that were once hidden, now they're being released. Let's go into this George line of kings. They're from Germany. Yes, Germany was occupied by predominantly people of color. Black people, don't be mistaken by anything else when you see all these images shown to you. Tell them, come with the word, the written document proving what those pictures are saying. They can't come with them because they don't exist. So don't look at pictures. Don't look at pictures. Have them come with the written proof. And even if they come with the written proof in these coded spell words, we will cover them in this message so you know that it still comes back to a person of color, a black person, royal of fear, George III and his troublesome siblings by Stella Tilliard, page 23 of that book, Prince of Wales, which is what George III father was called. Frederick, Prince of Wales, was a what? A black prince. Let's jump it off the right way. He's a black man. His father is a black man. Let's move on. John Brooke, King George III, page 288 of that book. Now we're talking about King George. The most prominent feature of his face large nose, thick lips, his complexion was ruddy. We already hurdled over that spell word, so ruddy can't fool us anymore. We know it's a person of color, a melanated person, red in complexion, copper color, transform that person into a copper color, a brown race person in our time. No more you can tell us ruddy means a Caucasian person with rosacea cheeks. Not at all, nonsense. Moving forward, this is what ruddy looks like. Ruddy red, ruddy gold. Ruddy red, ruddy yellow. Take a good look because you'll see other words being thrown at you to mean the same thing. Sanguine, that's a ruddy red. A person of color, just the same. Florid, that's a red complexion, a lively red. Person of color, just the same. All spell words. All spell words to disguise the fact that this person is a person of color. In our modern day categorization that they, the wicked, have changed it into black person, Negro person. Make no mistake, moving along, defining what ruddy is. Adam, who's the ruddy man, which represents all these other ruddy people that we're talking about in our time. Adam to be red in reference to his ruddy complexion. Adam signifying red or copper color. Make no mistake, this is not a Caucasian. Gentile, as I'll describe in the Bible, that's not talking about them. If you want to talk about the Gentiles, the Caucasian, they're referencing the Bible as Eve. If Adam is a race of people, Eve is also a race of people from breaking it down. Genesis 10 verse 2 through 5 tells you the Japhetites are the Caucasian. Japhetites are the Eve race. Not an actual woman in the literal sense, in the third dimensional sense. It's a race of people as Adam is a copper color race, a red race, which is now a brown race. Eve is a Caucasian race, signifying the Japhetites as well. Moving on, everyone knows this. Now it's time for us to know it. Adam, 
leading to the right conclusion. Adam leading to the right conclusion that Adam were the red or copper colored people. How many times we're going to have to tell these people they can't fool us anymore? How many times we're going to have to tell these scholars that's coming up with all kind of brilliant ideas about who Adam is and all kind of this and that? No, Adam is talking about you, oh children of Israel, you're from the Adamic race. Adam is talking about you, oh children of Jacob, you are of the Adamic race. Adam is talking about you, oh children of Judah, you're from the Adamic race. Make no mistake, moving on, a royal experiment, the private life of King George III by Janice Hadlow. Sanguine is King George's complexion. Again, I pointed this word out to you, meaning ruddy as well, meaning reddish brown color, still a dark skinned melanated man. Hasn't changed the fact of that. George III by J.C. Long, a biography, page 66 of that book, tells you about George III, Father Frederick. Didn't we just cover Frederick? And it told us Frederick is called Black Prince. Now it's giving you more specific. His father, Frederick, was dark complexion, almost like a Moor. A Moor is a black colored person. A Moor is a dark skin colored person. Father dark skin, the son is dark skin, but a little lighter, as it tells you on page 67. George had a high coloring. Fair skin doesn't mean he's Caucasian people. Fair meaning it's clear of smallpox, which was plaguing everyone at that time. No more misconception about these tricky words that were being used in the time of the menticide phase. That's done and over with. Logic and sound mind takes root right now. Moving on, a royal experiment, the private life of King George III, Janice Hadlow, page 412 of that book. Charlotte, which is King George III's wife, her sallow complexion. Sallow means yellowish color, tinged with dark yellow. She's a light-skinned woman. That's what the book is saying. But we're going to dig further to corroborate what this is saying. Dorothy Margaret Stewart, she wrote The Daughters of George III. Let's hear what she has to say. Charlotte Augusta Matilda, she is the princess and daughter of King George III and his wife Charlotte. Now it's talking about his wife Charlotte. Swarthy, Charlotte's mother is swarthy. What is swarthy? A dark complexion person being of a dark complexion, dark dusky complexion. Her mother was a black woman. They called her a true mulatto face woman. Can't be any more specific than that. She was a black woman. Charlotte, the wife of King George III, a mulatto-faced black woman. Moving forward in the same book, they talk about the queen specifically. Page 270 of that book. Queen Charlotte, her dark coloring. A dark-skinned woman, the father is dark, the mother is dark. Obviously, the kids are going to be dark as well. George III, A Personal History by Christopher Hibbert, page 45. The Garden Report of Queen Charlotte's appearance was described by Walpole when he said she had a rather swarthy, anytime you see rather, rather means very, very swarthy, very, very dark complexion. That's what she had, Charlotte. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, dark-skinned woman in appearance, she was of what? Mulatto. She could pass as a mulatto. Dark-skinned woman, dark-skinned women in England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, and Germany as the crown princess and queens of those nations. Conclusion, be not fooled by the wicked who have covereth the faces of the people doing the things at this time. How desperate can you be to steal someone's identity? That's a major inferiority complex. 
you could have just pushed them out of power and let things be, but you went further, stole their identity, passing it off as your own. But it's not. We're here to tell you. We know it's not your identity anymore. No matter how many image, we don't expect you to relent. We don't expect you to repent of what you do. We don't expect you to recompense. But we do expect that the most high will set everything straight. The crooked shall be set straight. So whatever you're planning on doing is of no consequence because most of uh, is gonna make it level. He already told you in Jeremiah, your children shall come and say, we have inherited lies on top of lies and vain things that profiteth nothing. So wait and you shall see, wait and you shall see that prophecy come true. King George III of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales was a black man. King George III's father, Frederick of Wales, Prince of Wales, was a black man. King George's wife, Sophia Charlotte, Macklebury Strelitz, was a black woman. King George's children were all black children. King George III fought the American Revolution War with black George Washington. We're gonna cover George Washington in a minute. King George fought the army of George Washington. That were the colonial soldiers were black as well. They're covering the face of the soldiers as well. How deep this thing goes, the rabbit hole goes very deep. Black George Washington is step great grandson-in-law is General Robert E. Lee which fought the American Civil War. Robert E. Lee, the Southern Confederate General. Black George Washington, step-grandson-in-law, the Southern Confederate General Robert E. Lee, who fought the American Civil War, was a black man, a person of color as well. We'll go through all of that. Let's start with Black Colonel George Washington of the colonial states of America, versus black King George III of England. King George didn't want to release the American land, the newfound land that they were getting all this wealth from, overworking, underpaying, actually not paying the native people of color that were on the land. And they were fighting about who is gonna get the spoils. And they went to war. One black man against another black man. One black nation against another black nation. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. No Caucasian nation at that time. We're going to prove that. Moving on. A few things you have to know about George Washington. He's related. He adopted John Park Custis. He, John Park Custis, came as the son of Martha Dandruff Park Custis from another marriage. George Washington married a widower and he adopted her children, John Park Custis and Patsy Park Custis. Keep that in mind. John Park Custis then had his own children, one of which is called George Washington Park Custis. Keep that in mind. That information is going to be used later. Let's move forward. History of George Washington. Bicentennial celebration. Every year they go in and they celebrate, they commemorate the work of George Washington. But all this time you're thinking it's a Caucasian George Washington that has done all these things that they say George Washington has done but it's not a Caucasian person. It's a person of color in our modern day because of their own rules of the wicked. They made that color into a black man. Page 225 of that book, page 225, George Washington is height, six feet, two inches, ruddy complexion. We already heard all over that. Wasn't King George ruddy as well? Turns out to be a black man. No different. George Washington was a black man. Ruddy was that trick word of the time. No more is it tricking us. Moving forward, Martha Washington, the first lady of liberty, Helen Bryan, page 85 of that book. Martha, 
from another marriage, married George Washington. He was with a ruddy complexion. Same thing again. We heard the past ruddy. No rosacea cheek, man. None of that. He was a black man. Fully black. If we see him in our modern day time. Fully black. If we see him on the street right now. We would say that's a black man. That's not a Caucasian man. Sunburned or tan or whatever else you want to put to describe George Washington. He's a black man. Mary and Martha, the mother and the wife of George Washington by Benson J. Lossing, page 105 of that book. Washington, his complexion is florid. We already got the pre-warning that florid means ruddy. Can't fool us with that no more. Moving on, George Washington, a biography. John R. Alden, a British officer who met Washington. I repeat, a British officer who met Washington. So he met him, not coming from the lies that you're seeing on the pictures on Google that didn't see George Washington. Let's hear what this man had to say who met him. Later reported, he had a dark complexion of a foreign look, a dark man. That's what he was, a black man in our modern day time, the young Virginian was. Moving on, George Washington, a biography by Douglas Southall Freeman, volume two of that book, page 239. Van Horn description was specific and might be useful. The man who inquired about the letter, which was George Washington, was tall and dark. Tall and dark. That was George Washington, a dark man. What tall, dark officer was there in America? 38 years of age and unmarried, the only officer in any way that could answer to that description was Colonel George Washington, a dark-skinned man, a black man in our modern day description for a dark-skinned man in America. Page 240 of that same book, London consequently asked Kennedy, London consequently asked Kennedy for a description of the Virginian Colonel George Washington. Kennedy replied and said, Washington, said the Captain Kennedy, was a man about six feet of height. We already confirmed that of what complexion? Black complexion. A black man. Put that in your book and teach that in your schools rather than continuing with the lies, the academic fraud that continues going and going and going. The menticide is done, O children of Israel. The Most High has opened up the spirit of truth, not of only what's going on around you, but the truth of his laws. His five divine laws, seven principles of the Lord thought makes it 12. Your two statutes, no graven image, no molten image, none of that in your life. And observe the Sabbath as the holiest days of all the days. That's the truth that's being handed back to you on top of all the other truth about who you are, where you're from, what language you speak, and what tribes you belong to, and what tribes you belong to. George Washington's stepdaughter, Martha Patsy Custis, as I've told you, he adopted two children. Martha Custis, also nicknamed the Dark Lady, as they called her, because of her deep brunette complexion. What is brunette? A dark-skinned woman, a brown-skinned woman. That's a brunette, not her hair as we have been misled during the time of the academic frauders. Rule over the school system. Rule over the educational system. She's not a Caucasian woman that with a brunette here. No, she's a dark-skinned complexion woman. Confirming it even more, Martha Washington, First Lady of Liberty, going back to this book, tells you, 
Patsy again, called the dark lady because of her brunette complexion. Brown skinned woman or a dark complexion woman. George adopted her, treated her his stepdaughter, treated her with care and had love for her. Martha Washington by Anne Hollingsworth Wharton, page 66 of that book. Martha Custis, as she is called, the dark lady, as she was called, in consequence of her brunette complexion. Again, three things corroborating that she's a dark-skinned woman, his adopted daughter. What about his adopted son? George Washington's adopted son, John Park Custis. That's why I told you, stick a pin on John Park Custis at the beginning. John Park Custis, Washington's ward, meaning Washington's stepson. Washington was responsible for him, had what? Dark of complexion. That's John Park Custis, dark of complexion. Mrs. John Park Custis, that's his wife, Eleanor. What was she? A beautiful, dark, slender girl. His wife was a dark-skinned woman. No doubt about the complexion of the people anymore who were doing these things. As I've asked you in my last message about George II, why can't George Washington family show up now for his bicentennial? Because they're dark-skinned people. It's going to disrupt the story that George Washington is a Caucasian person. No, they're not Caucasian. They are black people in our modern day that were phased out when the wicked started painting over faces. Let's do the roadmap. Let's do the roadmap from George Washington to Robert E. Lee. Didn't think they had any relation together. Didn't think they were related. Didn't think there's any correlation between them. Think again. Let's do the tracing. George Washington is adopted son, John Park Custis. John Park Custis had a son named George Washington Park Custis. George Washington Park Custis had a daughter named Mary Anna Custis Lee. That's her last name that she got from what? Marrying Robert E. Lee. Now you see the trail from George Washington to Robert E. Lee. Robert E. Lee. Mary, the great step-granddaughter of George Washington, all connected back. They were all people of color. George Park Custis, his wife was dark-skinned. Two black people have a son. George Washington Park Custis, obviously he's going to be black. He had a daughter. Obviously she's going to be black as well. So Robert E. Lee, a black man, married a black woman, Mary Anna Custis Lee. All people of color, black people in our modern day, doing all these things. That's why it tells you America Earth is given into the hands of the wicked who changes the faces of the judges, the rulers, the prophets, and everyone they can get their hands on. The brush was busy painting over image. The brush was working overtime painting over image to make everything Caucasianized when it wasn't. The shoes doesn't fit. The shoes doesn't fit. So you can't wear that shoes anymore. It's going to give you corn. Black Colonel George Washington and the black soldiers, the black colonial soldiers of colonial America. They were all black people. Black George Washington leading a predominantly black army of soldiers fighting the American Revolution, winning the independence for America. So when you go out and celebrate your 4th of July, which is right around the corner, you're celebrating what the people of color, the black people have won for you in the United States of America. No more disguising who were the people fighting these American Revolution War, who were the people that were the first presidents of United States of America. No more disguising their faces. It's out in the open right now. The most I said I shall release 
the truth, and it's time for the truth to be released. Black Colonel George Washington, the Virginia colonial soldier, must roll. That's what it comes down to, August 1757, enlistment a couple of years before the colonial wars started, total enlisted soldiers in George Washington's company, 91 of them. Here they are listed out, telling you who exactly they are. George Washington, when he was the colonel, this is his muster roll. There it is. It tells you their complexion, and it tells you what country they come from. And when you see fear, I'm just giving you the benefit of the doubt that it's talking about their Caucasian. I know it's not, but I'm giving you that just to help boost up the Caucasian numbers to show that you still didn't reach majority. Because fear means you don't have smallpox. It doesn't mean you're a Caucasian. But I'm giving that to you just in case you kind of complain, saying it's fair, so it's Caucasian, even though I know it's not. But let's move on. Scotland, you see one of them is from, right? He's ruddy, he's from Scotland. And we know ruddy means dark skin complexion, man. Whether ruddy red or ruddy gold, or we know he's of the brown complexion race. Moving on, it gets more disastrous. Look at the list. All these people, dark skin in brown color, Caucasian as we put it, fair skin in red. Even though all the red are not Caucasian people, but I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt that it is. All dark-skinned people. They're from England, Ireland, Scotland, all over Europe. So now you're going to tell me there were no people of color in Europe. What is this on the list? Where is it coming from? Where did they come from then? They weren't native to America. So they were where they were coming from? They were coming from Europe. Europe was majority people of color before the Caucasians, the Gentiles, took over in the late 1800s in Europe and in America as well. This is the muster roll. The first two pages, majority dark-skinned people as highlighted in brown color. Very few fair skin complexion people, George Washington Army, that was fighting the colonial war for the American Revolution and independence were predominantly black people. We jump to another page, it doesn't get any better for the fair skin or pale skin people, but here it is now, telling you they're pale skin. That one I can give you because I know pale skin is clearly a Caucasian description based on all the research, but I'm still gonna give you some of the fear. I'm gonna give you the fear to help boost your number. Still won't help you because it doesn't get you to the amount of brown colors describing the black people, people of color that were in the army of the colonial America from England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales. That's where they were coming from when you hear Oliver Cromwell, Oliver Cromwell banishing and kicking out people out of England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Do you think he's kicking out pale skin and fair skin complexion people only? You have to be out of your mind once you start opening yourself up to truth. He was banishing people of Color, here they are listed, their descendants thereof. There they are, people of color making up a colored man army, George Washington. His army was predominantly black men in his army. Which brings us to the summary of his army roster. 1757, 
George Washington colonial army roster that he was leading, 91 soldiers, 68 of them were clearly people of color in our modern day black men. 16, a combination of pale and fair. I have overstated this number just to show you that you still don't get there as majority. When I put the fear, which I know quite a bit of them means people without smallpox, but they were dark skinned people as well. But I have to give your number a boost. 16 in total, Caucasian, a combination of fear and pale, 17% of the total. Another seven, no complexion was given. But in totality, the people of color, 75%. That's what the army consistency of George Washington was in 1757. Do you think that changed by much leading up to the American War of Revolution? No, it did not. The ratio stayed the same. Because even up to the Civil War time, the army ratio would be the same because, because Robert E. Lee was a black man. Abraham Lincoln was also a black man, which is indicative of the majority of people in America at that time. So I'm making sure I tell you, it's no anomaly of George Washington's army, colonial army, to be majority men of color, people of color. We go to the black soldiers of the New York Provincial Colonial Troops Army. They made their muster roll as well. So we don't have to rely on pictures. We can go to the literatures on who these people are, who these people were in complexion. 1755 to 1764. This is the army's muster roll of New York. 42 soldiers on this page. 26 of the soldiers were men of color. 16 were a combination of fair skin and pale skin. And I know for a fact, fair skin doesn't mean they're pale skin. It means they are free of spots and blemishes on their skin, smallpox in particular. But again, I give you the benefit of the doubt. Look at the ratio of brown markings next to it versus the red. And I've broken out the numbers for you and where they're coming from. They're coming from, again, England, some from Ireland. Some of the dark-skinned men were coming from natives of America. The Indians, the musty complexion people, dark-skinned people. All again, that's the roster of people ratio of dark to Caucasian. Majority again were people of color in New York. Another page of the New York muster roll, 1758. Still the same majority people of color, 42 soldiers, 28 people of color, 14 Caucasian, which is overstated because I'm including the fair skin because I know fair skin doesn't mean that they're Caucasian, but I'm adding it in there anyway. They're from Germany. They're from Ireland. They're from Switzerland. They're from England. All people of color. That's where the dark skin population were coming from Europe with the ones that were already here in America that were being enslaved by the aristocrat dark-skinned people coming from Europe. Once you get past that boundary, people, where you know within yourself now who was doing the enslaving, then the whole history and the puzzle of it falls right into place. You, my melanated people of color, you were the ones doing the enslaving at the beginning. Enslaving 
your brothers and your sisters that were native to America because you thought you were more pure in your religion that gave you the right to rule over your dark-skinned brothers and sisters that were in America. You, oh European dark-skinned people, classified your brothers and sisters that were native to America as infidels from a religious standpoint and savages from a cultural standpoint. And you thought it upon yourself that warranted that you ruled over them. And then you created categorization for them, social status for them, making yourself white, which means that you are free of sin, not a complexion at the time it originated during the Bacon's Rebellion. No, it was not a complexion in 1676. No, it meant that you thought you were free of sins because you were from Europe. You knew what the religious custom should be. You knew what Christianity should be. And because they're natives practicing the Hebrew religion, they were infidels and were black, not free of sin. And you have to rid them of their sin in your own self-conceit ideas. That's the genesis of the United States. The colonial first and then the United States of America. That's it in a nutshell. But it were you, oh melanated people, black people that were enslaving other black people and enslaving the Caucasian as well because they came over as indentured servants. Most of the people do, but those who were of the elite status called it upon themselves to enslave everyone else and undermine the racial divide based on who is pure versus who is not pure. Simply what it is, my people. Once you come to terms with the true history that's in front of you, if you keep holding on, if you keep holding on to the wicked version of the history, then you will forever be misled, thinking it was Caucasian people who were enslaving dark-skinned people all from that time, from 1619, all the way till now. No, not a chance. These were all dark-skinned people that were in control of the United States of America. Moving on, another muster roll. 36 soldiers, 25 of them, are black men, black enlisted men, all type of description for them. Ruddy, dark, mulatto, brown Indian, black Indian, didn't think Indians were black, they were black people as well. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Other black people coming from Europe, enslaving black people that were native to America. Make no mistake, but the majority of the people that were fighting for America's independence, so-called independence for the elites, were people of color, not Caucasian people, as we think in our modern day. So my melanated people, when they're celebrating 4th of July, they're celebrating your victory to win America from England and making it your own land, even though most of what you did was for the benefit of the elites who continued to rule over not only the natives, but also the lower class people of color, as they put it, giving you a white status to make you feel good about yourself, but you are still being enslaved by what we call the elites that were in America at that time, which are still people of color. Let's fast forward another 90 to 100 years in America. Let's see if the people of color still remained in control of America at the time of the American Civil War. Black President Abraham Lincoln of the United States of America versus black Confederate leader, General Robert E. Lee of the Confederate States 
of America, the demographics of the majority of blacks, the majority of leaders that are people of color remained the same at that time. 100 years later from 1770s to 1860s, moving into the 1870s, still the same people of color. Let's go back to this chronology of how we got from George Washington to Robert E. Lee. The connection is there. George Washington's great step-granddaughter, Mary Anna Custis Lee, was the wife of Robert E. Lee. Robert E. Lee was the Confederate leader that was fighting to be separated from the United States of America over money, which is a root cause, but they'll tell you it's about freeing slaves, the native of the land. It was never about freeing slaves. It was always about the money. Nothing changes from that time to our time where these decisions are made because of money. The same American Revolution War had incurred debt on the part of the United States of America that it was struggling to pay. And the northern states of United States of America wanted the southern states of the United States of America to pay more of the debt because the southern states were very, very profitable from free labor as a result of slavery. So the northerners wanted the southerners to pay more of the cost of the debt. The debt was payable to France because France had financed the American Revolution War. That said debt that was owed to France was later on converted to the United Kingdom, to England, when they collateralized those debts from France to England during the Napoleon time. That's the history of your civil war. It was who was going to pay the bigger cost of that debt that had incurred when France loaned money to America for the American Revolution War. Then America used James Swan to renegotiate that debt, to pay off the debt by issuing government bonds, which are government IOUs, to private banks and to private investors in America and Europe. Majority of those European new debt holders were in the United Kingdom. Now, instead of IOU France, I'm going to owe the private investors. So now they want payment of those debt during the time of the American Civil War. And the Northerners wanted the Southerners to pay more of that cost to the new debt holders, which were these private banks in the U.S. And a lot of them, majority of them in Europe, in the United Kingdom. And they went to war. And one of the way to weaken the backbone, the backbone economy of the South was to make labor no longer free, where you had to pay for labor. Then the profit margin will go down because now you have to pay wages to people that you had working for free. That's the whole financial aspect of the American Civil War stemming from the American Revolutionary War because that's where the original debt was incurred. It continued to be a balance on the books of the United States at the American Civil War time. And it's arguing over who is going to pay that debt. If you're making a lot of profit in the South from free labor, you have to pay more. So Lincoln said, I'm going to remove your free labor. And the South says, no way. And they went to war over it as a result of the free labor being removed. Robert E. Lee, 
A Life of General Robert E. Lee by John Estin Cook. General Lee was a ruddy man. We already know what ruddy is. No more confusion on that. Robert E. Lee, a portrait by Margaret Sanborn. Page 380 of that book. General Lee, people who saw him say he had a ruddy complexion. Wrote it in his notebook. General Lee had a ruddy complexion. We already know what ruddy is. No sense in spending extra time on it. Robert E. Lee, a biography by Douglas Southall Freeman, volume one of that book, page 98. Lieutenant Lee at the time, he's a ruddy complexion engineer. No sense in spending time on ruddy. We already heard it past that. We go to page 450. In appearance, one fellow traveler who saw Robert E. Lee, General Lee, said he had a florid complexion. We know florid is the other spell word for ruddy, same as sanguine, all the same meaning. A person of color, a dark-skinned, melanated people. In our modern day, we call them black people. Robert E. Lee. The Man and the Soldier, a pictorial biography by Philip Van Doren Stern, page 237 of that book. Mr. Lee's wife, Mrs. Lee, which is Mary Anna Custis Lee, who knew what her husband looked like, described him as florid. She herself was a black woman. We already done the family lineage to know what color she was. And she certainly would have known her husband color. He's florid, another tricky term, but we know it means ruddy, a dark-skinned, melanated person. Robert E. Lee, The Southerner, by Thomas Nelson Page. Page 274 of that book. General Lee, this author want you to recall the true image of General Lee, not the painted over one as talked to us in Job 9, verse 24, where the wicked shall take over earth, America, and start painting over all the image of the rulers, the prophets, and the leaders, the kings and queens. Page 275, a florid complexion. That's what Robert E. Lee, General Robert E. Lee had, a florid which is a person of color complexion. Robert E. Lee, a biography by Emery M. Thomas, which put all the doubts aside. Chapter six, the beginning of that book. Lee, tall and dark. You see where they talked about George Washington Park, Custis <laughs> and Anna Lee. We know they're black people as well. Lee was no different. He was a tall black man. Get it right this time. No more of that trickery by the changers who went in and whitewashed the image as the most I had warned us that the images would be whitewashed. Picture of Robert E. Lee. Icon for a nation did their best to kind of colorize his jacket. But you see the complexion is dark. On the recolored version, you see the complexion is a black man. That's what I'm here to tell you. He wasn't in a tanning booth getting any tan, as they always tell you. He's sunburned and he's this. No, he's a black man. He's a person of color. Make no mistake about it. Now let's figure out what happened to these people why their descendants can't show up at any of their celebration and celebrate what their forefathers and their foremothers were doing because they got whitewashed, because they got erased with the 1924 Racial Integrity Act, which says when the Caucasian took rule of North America, when the Caucasian took rule of Europe, they came up with this law in Virginia, which spread across the entire United States of America, Racial Integrity Act of Virginia. It says, in order to continue to be classified as white, as pure and free of sin, they change it over into a complexion. 
classification. A person who has no trace whatsoever of any other blood but Caucasian. That's the only way you can continue to call yourself white. So before this rule, right? What was it? What was the classification? If now at this time you have to say you have to be Caucasian to be white. What was it before? When we were on the mental side, we didn't ask these things. But what was it before 1924 when you said it was Caucasian? What was it before 1924? It was any person who is of European ancestry was classified as white because you did not classify yourself as an infidel savage. You classified yourself as a Protestant civilized and pure of sin. So that's why you gave yourself the white classification. But when the Gentiles or Caucasians took over in 1920s, that's when they fully changed the rule on you. Now they're saying you have to be a Caucasian in order to be classified as white. So what happened to George Washington family? What happened to Robert Healy's family? What happened to Abraham Lincoln family? What happened to all the families of King Charles? All the families of King James? All the dark-skinned people that were in the army that fought for American independence? All the dark-skinned people that were in the Civil War army fighting for unification and de-unification of America? What happened to them? The racial, the racial integrity act require that you have to be Caucasian in order to continue to maintain that status pushed by Walter Plecker. We all know of Walter Plecker. If you could not prove that you had no trace other than Caucasian blood, you became colored. So instantly, if you are dark skin complexion, you could not and you had no ability to prove that you were 100% Caucasian. So you instantly became colored. They didn't make you black. They made colored of everyone who fit outside of the Caucasian 100% blood. That's what happened in 1924, rolled out across the entire United States of America. Then in 1930, they amended that set act from 1924 to classify you now because the story has to stick while we're changing your record and painting over your images that you were from Africa. So you wouldn't know that you were part of the original foundation of United States of America, that you founded the United States of America July the 4th is your day, even though you were enslaving other people on this land that were also of a dark complexion. So they came up with, you are African American. You're not from Africa. You are from Europe or you are from the original people of America. That's majority of the people. Some came from Africa, but off the Guinea coast. Those are the ones that were banished there by the Portuguese and the Spaniards, which were also people of color. It's all people of color doing all this nonsense during the 1490s all the way up until the late 1800, until they got whitewashed. So you became African-American can't find your way back to how you came from Europe, founded America, gave it its independence from UK, and then you fought a civil war fighting for you're going to keep people enslaved versus freeing them up and paying off debt that you incurred to France, which was a black ruled country as well. All black people, even Napoleon at the time was a black man. He wasn't born in France. He was born off the coast of Africa, off the coast of Italy. No, all this history is lies on top of lies on top of lies. You had to now hurdle two things. You have to hurdle that you were not from Africa, 
that's your first hurdle. Then you have to hurdle because the thought is you're from Africa, that you're not from Europe. You have to now hurdle that you're from Europe. If you can't get past the Africa hurdle, oh, you can't get past the Europe hurdle. That's why the job is now for the most I waking up is saying and saying, go tell these people what land they belong to, what language they used to speak and where they are from. Western Europe, North America, you were there, no matter what they say or how many acts they pass. This is how they mixed you in. Let's look at the Virginia Racial Integrity Act to preserve racial integrity. Remember we talked about Queen Charlotte? who had the face of a mulatto? Let's figure out where Queen Charlotte would have been placed based on the Racial Integrity Act. A mulatto is the offspring of a Caucasian person and a Negro, that's what the new rule says. So if you are a mulatto, you're gonna fit into this category. Let's read on. A quadroon is the offspring of a mulatto and a Caucasian person. The quadroon is an offspring of a mulatto and a Caucasian person. An octoroon is the offspring of a quadroon and a Caucasian person. Mixtures of any of these three. Mixtures, I say, of any of these three should be designated as what? Black, Negro, colored. Instantly, you lost your white social class status, and now you're running around in United States of America as a black, Negro, or colored. That's why I'm telling you, these people are here with you. They can't show up at their own bicentennial. They can't show up to represent their families because their family has been changed to Caucasian by the whitewash. And they, the true family, has been classed as black, Negro, colored to this date until different. That's what happened to all the families that I just described, the ones especially that were in America. That's what happened to all the colonial soldiers who fought for your 4th of July celebration, that the majority of the colonial army were people of color. They became mixtures of Negroes and colored. That's what happened to them. Now let's talk about the people that were natural to the land, which they classify as Indians. Page three, we're still on page three. That's a troublesome page. Page three, the term Indian will no longer be accepted for that class, but must be applied only to those known Pure Indian blood. That's how the $5 Indians term came up because only they were classified as Indian. Everyone else that was of a different color, native to the land, let's see what happened to them. But if there's a mixture of Negro in those Indian, they must not be classed as Indian, but as Negro or mixed Indian. No one used that mixed Indian category. Straight up, they were classified as Negro, just as the dark-skinned people that came from Europe doing all the things before the colonial time, after the colonial time, before the Civil War time, after the Civil War time, they were in one of those two categories. Still, black, negro, colored. That's what your Racial Integrity Act did to hide these people and push up new rules that they had to be Caucasian to classify themselves as white. That's what happened to you in the United States of America. So all this time since 1924, we're coming up to 2024, right? We're almost a hundred years 
They have been telling you, you were in Europe, you were in America. Anyone that's of color came from Africa. Lies on top of lies. The Most High and the Lord told you, Lucifer is a liar. And all those who follow him is a liar. Just like their father that tell lies, they have to tell lies. So when Esau tie himself, the Caucasians that want to be in the ruling class tie themselves to Lucifer and became Esau. They were going to tell lies on top of lies to cover up the lies on top of lies. My people, do you know how much resource has gone into maintaining this lie? Do you know how many schools, how many economics, how many political how many church and religion and Christianity effort? How many food effort has gone into keeping this lie active? Someone really doesn't want you to know yourself that you are these people doing the job. They didn't just take the identity. They made sure any trace of you was not there. But I'm here to tell you, you were there. Back to the three groups of people that were captured in this colored black Negro category once they slashed it and said you have to be Caucasian. We're now going to take your place and everything that was in white, everything that classified a person as white before 1924, we're going to assume all that history for ourselves. That's why when I come and I tell you Cromwell was not a Caucasian person, even though you see things written that he's white. It's talking about the social status because someone else stepped in, filling all that history for themselves, the good and the bad, and take it as their own. It's going to be a massive shocker when people truly understand, especially the Caucasians who have been living this lie unknowingly because their forefathers didn't tell them about this lie that occurred during the 1920s to change the entire history of the structure, the people structure of America. But let's get into it. Category one, indigenous people that were in Spain and Portugal, they were expelled from Spain and Portugal as part of the Roman Catholic persecution. They were abandoned to islands off the Guinea coast, Sahetome, Cape Verde, Malabo, the Canary Islands, and they were sold into slavery by the Spaniards, by the Portuguese, to the Europeans, to the Europeans, the English and the French and the Dutch slave traders. And that's how they came into North America through one of that vine. And they were immediately classified as Negro, then as Black as of 1676. Once they touched the soil of America, Black. The second category, the indigenous People of color in Western Europe that migrated to North America, some voluntarily because they were looking for a better life, or some came under imprisonment or being banished because they were rebels. They came to North America, all of them as indentured servants. They served seven and above number of years in servitude. Then they were free to move around as free people. They were dark skin complexion people. A lot of them, majority of them, as I've shown you in George Washington's army. They, when the 1924 act came about, they immediately became black Negro colored, even though as of 1676, they were classified as white, meaning they are pure of sin because they're from Europe and they're more cultured in the correct Christianity, Protestant, as they tell themselves. That's the second batch. The third and most important 
The third and most important are the Hebrew indigenous. They're classified as Indian people of color in North America. We're going to stay with North America, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean that was put into slavery by category number two on their own land. Category number two put category number three in slavery on their own land. That's what happened. Dark skin, colored people, black people, enslaving other black people that were indigenous to the land. Category three was Negro from the beginning. From the category two, the Western Europeans arrived, they classified them as Negroes, then moved their classification to black in 1676 as part of the Bacon's Rebellion. That's the breakdown of people if you want to do your history and do it the right way and formulate the correct visual image of what the most I want you to know. No more looking at painted images. No, the literature as it's told to you by those who were present at the time. Because the most I told you, Job 9 verse 24, the wicked is going to take over America and paint the images of all the people of color to be his own image, Caucasian, which were not the people doing those things. Bring us back where we started, Testament of Asha 7, because the most I is fulfilling his promise. He said, I will gather the people once more, all those who got scattered and did not know where they're from, who they are, what land they belong to, what tribe they belong to, what language they spoke. I'm going to gather them in faith, in their belief of what my messengers are coming to them and telling them if they believe that the Most High is coming back for them to reveal the truth to them and to move them out of the path of their oppressors and to restrain the hand of the wicked who has changed all the information pertaining to those people. He said he's going to gather you think he's going to renege on that promise? No way! That's where your belief come in. And those who know that you're going to be gathered and to be given the truth, they're working hard to maintain those images that they have painted for you. If you look at some of those pictures, my people, if you look carefully at the images that were painted over, blow it up expand it to about 200%. You check the curve line around the necks. You'll see the pixelation of where they changed. They didn't have the technology we had today to make those changes seamless. So it's a whole bunch of pixelation around the head and the neck. And if you look at the hands, you'll see the pixelation where they change the color, different pixelation when it comes to the clothes and the skin. All the skins are pixelated. Look at some of the original pictures that are printed and given back to you in books. You'll see the terrible paint washing that was done. Brings us to Doctrine and Covenant 45, verse 25. They shall be gathered again. Those people in the three categories, even though you were enslaving your brothers and sisters, you have your chance now. To be back in the gathering of the Most High. The Gentiles who made the changes, you have your chance as well. If you don't grab onto that chance, no good news that I have for you. But know that the people of the children of Israel, the people of the children of Jacob, the people of the children of Judah shall be gathered again. But they had remained until the times of the Gentiles was fulfilled, until the times of the Caucasians was fulfilled, until the times of those elite Caucasians who changed the images were fulfilled. That fulfillment ended in 2020. 
So now it's borrowed time that they're on. So seek ye the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding of the Most High, and reopen your sound mind so you can see and know and never be out of line with the direction in which the Most High is moving this movement right now. Stand strong, O children of Israel. Stand strong, O children of Judah. Stand strong, O children of Jacob. In the name of the Most High, Allah, Yah, Yod, Heh, Fahu, Heh, Elohim, God in our modern day name, and in the name of the Lord, Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah, Praise be unto you, O oh my Lord Thoth, because you have brought back the spirit of truth in the Son of Righteousness, Prince Lewis, to release all the energy on us, to wake us up out of our grave. And now we can inherit our gift of eternal life. Forever and ever we shall be with our Father and with you. Praise be. Praise be.